Hi guys, this is tabletnews.com and I'm here with the Samsung Galaxy Note 10.1 the famous tablet with a 10.1 inch screen and the stylus that's available right here in a special slot and this model was unveiled back at Mobile World Congress early this year back then it had a dual core CPU now it has a quad core CPU, it also upgraded the back camera and it has 2GB of RAM and the design was tweaked a bit you can find this product for $499 in the 16GB Wi-Fi version also you should know that it comes in uh, white or black it was launched in August and now it's a quad core affair with 2GB of RAM now let's get to the design as you can see everything is plasticky so plastic edges and also plastic back with a texture that reminds me of the Galaxy S3 too bad that it creaks as you can hear so especially when you grab the sides you'll hear it creaking and as far as the design goes we have all the ports and slots on a single side so the SIM slot is available right here this is the SIM slot next to it is the audio jack here is the infrared port and this is the micro SD card slot this one right here and then we have the volume buttons and the on off button up front we have a 1.9 megapixel camera at the bottom we have this proprietary port used to connect to the PC and to the charger we have these lateral speakers one here and one here stereo speakers on the side actually pretty good 5 megapixel camera with flash and that's about it it measures 8.9 millimeters in thickness so it's very thin it weighs 600 grams so it's pretty light and uh, what else to say of course there's this stylus slot light right here this is the S Pen the evolved version of this S Pen stylus that's inserted right here okay so that's about it when it comes to the design I'm pretty sorry about the creaks of the case that's a big disadvantage if you ask me the display is a PLS TFT 10.1 inch screen resolution 1280 over 800 pixels and there are also some settings you can change to alter the functioning of the screen like these screen modes so you can set dynamic, standard or movie what I can say about the screen is that the colors and brightness are pretty good the viewing angles are so-so and the glare is a problem and also the behavior in direct sunlight can be a problem for this model other specifications of the tablet include uh, 2 gigabytes of RAM 16, 32 or 64 gigabytes of internal storage we also get HSDPA connectivity 21 mega per second Wi-Fi, Bluetooth 4.0, infrared and as I said 5 megapixel camera with 720p capture a front 1.9 megapixel camera and the CPU inside this device is a quad core Exynos 4412 1.4 gigahertz processor we also get a Mali 400 MP GPU so we have the same processor and uh, GPU as the Galaxy S3 and the same GPU as the Galaxy S2 other than that we get an accelerometer gyroscope compass GPS and GLONASS and the tablet comes in black and white as I already said the battery inside is a lithium-ion 7000 mAh unit it's good enough for 8 hours of video playback if you use it moderately you will reach 1 or even 2 days of use with a bit of web browsing a bit of movie playback a bit of uh, let's say music listening and some editing with the stylus it takes quite a while to charge it will take a few hours to charge it to 100% the battery and as far as the S Pen goes this one is a new generation it's longer and thicker than its predecessor it's also very very light and in the package it had a special ring to change the center core of the S Pen so overall it's been revamped it has a button right here that you can use to trigger various functions but more about that later now I'm going to talk to you about the performance of the tablet its benchmarking abilities for that I'm going to enter the screenshot area and this is Quadrant this is the screenshot that I took of Quadrant we scored 5249 points in Quadrant we compared that to the Nexus 7 that only scores 3600 and we compared that to the Asus Transformer Infinity Pad that scored 4600 Meanwhile, the ASUS platform scored 5000. So this model surpasses all of the above mentioned models, including ASUS. So in Antutu, we scored 12,000, 
394. We surpassed Nexus 7 again, that only scored 10,000, Infinity Pad 11,000 and Asus Pad Phone 6,000. So till now this one rules, this Samsung device. In the Nena Mark II, 58.9 frames per second, surpassing the Nexus 7 with 55 frames, surpassing the Infinity Pad that got 34 frames because it, of its Full HD screen, while the Pad Phone has 60 frames per second, so a bit superior to this model. And finally, the Velamo score. In Velamo we scored 2,356, obviously passed the Nexus 7 with 1,700, also passed Infinity Pad 1,400 and close to the Asus Pad Phone that had 2,400. So those two are actually pretty close, this tablet and the Pad Phone. Finally we get the browser mark result. This one we scored 150,000 while the iPad 3 scores 100,000 and the Nexus 7 scores 120,000. So these models rules all the benchmarks and it triumphs in them. But honestly speaking, I do not feel the quad-core CPU or the 2 gigabytes of RAM. I don't feel that superiority. I don't feel the tablet uh, interface flying in my hands with so much power. So overall, it's a decent experience, but not as fast as I desire. Back to the S Pen, you have to know that they improved the pressure levels. It has 1024 levels of pressure, so much more than the predecessor span. Okay, now it's time for the multimedia part of the review. This means that I'm going to access the music app. Here's the music player and I'm going to play a song to see what these dual speakers can do, those stereo speakers. For that I'm going to use uh, the latest single from Muse the band that made the anthem of the Olympic Games. These are the settings. A lot of settings. So let's move on to the more exciting part of the song. So I'm very happy with the audio playback, nothing to draw back the tablet here, the audio experience is great. You also get some very good headphones, I was impressed with them. They're white and they come bundled with the tablet, something you don't see very often nowadays. Okay, now let's get to the video playback, here is the video player. I have a lot of trailers to choose from, as you can see some previews are available for some of them. Let's choose this trailer for a new action movie with Bruce Willis. So let's skip forward. This time travel crap is fresh brain like an egg. You can also select pop up play to see the movie and continue doing something else. So I can move the movie around. And for example, I can go to YouTube or check my email and keep watching the movie. There's also multi-screen, but I will handle that later. Okay, we saw video, audio, now it's time for the camera. So here it goes, camera time. This is the interface that you already know about and we have this little globe here to use it for samples. So let's take a pic. Here's the picture I've just taken. 
zooming in. 4 or 5 megapixel camera is pretty decent with autofocus, LED, 720p capture, 30 frames per second. Now let's see some of the options that we have available. Obviously we have flash options, we have settings for the shooting mode, we have smile shot, panorama and we can cartoonize this globe. There is also a share shot, body photo share, some effects like negative, black and white or sepia. Obviously exposure settings and the main settings here. This one with edit shortcuts, flash, single shot, scene mode, timer effects, ISO, GPS tagging and more. Obviously there's video capture in 720p 30 frames per second with these options right here, some effects, some exposure and that's about it when it comes to the interface. Now let's see some samples. So let's put the globe aside and enter the gallery. As I said, I'm pretty happy for with this camera for what it's uh, capable of. It's pretty decent. So let's see picture of a flower. So it's actually pretty good considering this is a tablet and tablets usually don't have much of a camera. Pretty good detail here. And we also film the video. Anyway, decent camera, once again, it, does, it won't win any awards, if you're wondering about, about that. So, this was the camera aspect. Now I have to mention that the tablet runs Android 4.0.4, you see that immediately. Obviously, which TouchWiz customization, so Android 4.0.4. TouchWiz, what does that mean? Well, it means that you get a bunch of specific Samsung widgets, like this one or this one and many other you see, here's one for S Suggest, one for S Planner, one for the video player, one for the weather, so specific widgets, but not only that, specific hubs as well, so we have the game hub, if you ask me it's useless, most of these games send you to the Google Play Store, and we have the music hub, this one is a sort of, if you want iTunes for Samsung, it's a music store, where you can buy new music if you want to. It has some problem with the lag as you can see it's pretty slow those covers should be moving and they're barely moving. You can divide music by genres, playlists or create your own page. It seems that the social hub and the readers hub are gone at least for now and as far as touch with customization goes you also have this screenshot button here that obviously allows to talk, take screenshots and edit them afterwards. So Android is not totally customized unless you want to use many widgets but they only drag down the performance. We also have those floating mini apps so you can open one, two, three or maybe four and move them around as you please, close them and switch between them to perform your regular activities, calculate, draw something or whatever stuff you need. Okay, so now it's time for me to show you some of the S Pen features and not only that. So as you saw, when I remove it, this uh, dashboard will appear, so to say. We have the S Note, S Planner, Crayon, Physics, Photoshop Touch, Polaris Office and some settings for the pen like hovering pen icon, pen attached, detached sound, battery saving, options after detaching the pen. So this is how you get to interact with this accessory first. Another important feature that Samsung advertised a lot for this device is the multi-screen. What uh, this means is that, for example, I can start watching a movie and browse at the same time. And since I mentioned browsing, let's go to the internet browser. And this is the virtual keyboard that you have. It's quite comfy. And if you pinch like this, you can use this floating keyboard. Or you can go with the split keyboard with thumb typing that I actually like a lot. So let's enter tablet news and see how the website loads on this device. So here we are, tabletnews.com. It loaded pretty fast as you can see and it's already ready for scrolling. No problem here, the web browsing is excellent. And once Jelly Bean will be available, I guess that Chrome will be your default option. So. As you can see we have here an option where it says multi-screen, if I'm in the browser I press multi-screen and I can go to the video player. So right now I can watch a movie 
and browse at the same time so as you can see I'm browsing the tablet news website and watching a movie I can click this to stop with the multi-screen and also in multi-screen I can go to the S note so I can watch a movie and take some notes maybe if I'm a director or something I saw a scene I like and want to memorize it so while I'm watching a helicopter fly I can take notes excuse my writing it's not the best so that's what the multitasking and multi-screen craziness is all about let's put the S Pen back and let's stop the multi-screen okay so multi-screen is an efficient way of multitasking in case the floating apps were not enough for you so Samsung offers multiple options of that stuff as you saw we already can take a screenshot like this or we can also take a screenshot using the good old S Pen so we press this button and keep the pen pressed on the screen and I just took a screenshot other uses of the S Pen are to trigger the S Note so I keep the button pressed double tap and a quick S Note version is available right here for taking notes once again my handwriting sucks so okay now let's see what else I can show you obviously you get the Samsung App Store on this device with Samsung all type of apps like back to school apps early bird apps a lot of apps we have top apps new apps so there is a lot of apps to have fun with on this tablet some of them are even not available in the Play Store so it's an advantage to get them from here they're unique and what else I can show you you get the all share play obviously the standard apps like Gmail and uh, Google Maps are included you also get a uh, peel smart remote if you have a Samsung TV and you press uh, uh, this button so let's say that I press this button I can turn the Samsung TV I last used on right now it probably already turned it on and I can change channel and do other stuff like that using this uh, peel smart remote uh, application aside from this app Samsung also offers a bunch of other apps bundled with the tablet like Photoshop touch so instead of paying for it in the Google Play Store you get it for free and I already show you the game hub and music hub so this is Photoshop touch excuse me if I'm not as good as Photoshop as you are so let's get to the tutorials this is what you can learn you can make a pencil sketch sounds easier begin tutorial so this is a sketch I need to duplicate a layer let's see what happens next select the pencil effect I can try this soft light change the intensity apply let's see some other effects sleepy hollow so playing with Photoshop is nice provided that you can also tweak your brush you can also do some other changes control size opacity a lot of options in this Photoshop not so good at it so here are some other artistic effects like comic book it's actually pretty cool once you get the hang of it so anyway if you wanted Photoshop on a tablet this is as close as it gets using the S Pen another app that I uh, can show you on this device that comes bundled with it is uh, the S Suggest here it is S Suggest this one suggests you what apps to install on the tablets on this tablet particularly so to get started it's sort of a starter pack of applications if you never had an Android tablet before or a Samsung tablet you use this one and you're happy with it okay and you must also know one thing and for that I'm going to enter the S Note the technology behind this S Pen is Wacom and it also involves palm rejection so what this means is I can draw and my palm will be sensed and not interpreted as a drawing so my palm is on the screen right now and is not seen as a input so to say okay so this is the famous S Note let's close this thing and I can show you a bunch of stuff you can do some very surprising stuff it includes mathematics you already saw me drawing that's no biggie here are some of the options some brushes colors 
various thicknesses and options all sorts of pencils and brushes to have fun with and patterns but you can also draw mathematical formulas or tables and even handwriting is supported so speaking of handwriting I'm going to the text area and this is the normal keyboard I go into this option and now watch me write this my handwriting is pretty bad hello Samsung tablet didn't quite get it it seems to get this one better how are you today so handwriting is supported no trouble about that now let's go back and uh, I promised you to show some mathematical formula like this one so let's do a square root square root of 4 I can press search and you will use Wolfram Alpha to give me the result also another thing worth mentioning is back in the handwriting area if I cut um, a sentence it will delete it well not in this case so let's try something like, like this complicated formula let's see what Wolfram Alpha has to say about this math question so it can handle everything and more than that so let me just close it. as you can see multi screen is automatically triggered by this action so let's see some mathematical shapes here we are if I draw a triangle recognized immediately another shape if I draw a square even if it's poor it's recognized so it has shape recognition aside from that you can also draw tables and hopefully your drawing is better than mine so this is a very good tool for mathematics students and teachers Okay, so you saw what this wonderful S Pen can do. It has uh, Wacom technology. Remember that. And uh, as I said, once you start writing words, you can also strike through. So uh, to draw a line, write through them to delete them. Also, this tablet comes with Smart Stay. It has no NFC, and it has an app called S Planner that should be around here. It's an evolved calendar. It's a beautified calendar, as you can see. It has a list, day-to-day -day list, week, month. So, a beautiful calendar with a business feeling, allowing you to add events. So you can tap to enter titles, so... Dinner party. It remember this, so to delete, as I said, you simply cut it and it's gone. And this is what the S Pen can do with the S Planner. We also have Photoshop Touch, Smart Stay, and believe it or not, this tablet is also a phone. You can dial people's numbers and call them. Not only a phone, but also a GPS replacement. Well, that's maybe too much said since we have Google Maps available. Obviously. So this is Google Maps, newest version. And there is no stopping to what this tablet can do, apparently. You also get Dropbox with 50 gigabytes of storage for two years. And I think I demoed all you need to see on this tablet. Obviously, it has Gmail. Obviously, it has this gallery function. And let's see what we missed. We show you internet, we show you music hub, as note, Photoshop touch. It comes with Polaris Office for productivity. It comes with a video maker, but you probably already know that. So that's about everything you need to know about the Samsung Galaxy Note 10.1. Now it's time for the pros and cons. And the hands are really starting to hurt from this 600 gram tablet. Well, you need to know that the pros for this tablet are the fact that, um, let's say, people working in graphics will love it. It has Wacom technology. It has a nice feel to it. It has Photoshop Touch for free. The S Pen is great. The multi-screen is great. The floating apps really give you a sense of true multitasking since you can do 
multiple things at the same time and will, will not feel any lag. I saw reviews out there complaining about lag when you use too many widgets. Well, people simply do not use too many widgets. It's as easy as that. The video and audio are great. These dual speakers, one here, one here, have great volume, great bass, no matter the type of music you listen. The video quality is great. Viewing angles, well, could be better. I expected full HD resolution and I was a bit underwhelmed. The camera is decent. You get lots of pre-installed applications. Handwriting works fine. You also have a phone feature, which I consider a bonus. And now, since these were the pros, now here come the cons. The case is pretty flimsy and plasticky. The battery, well, I wanted more than 8 hours of video playback or 1 or 2 days of normal use. The display resolution is underwhelming. The design is the same as the one of the Samsung Galaxy Tab 2 10.1, even the placement of the ports. So there aren't any big revolutions on this model, aside from the quad-core Exynos CPU and the 2GB of RAM and obviously the S Pen. Also, the price can be seen as big in comparison to the newer models, like the new Kindle Fire that will come soon or the Nexus 7, but this is more of a pro tablet, since it has the S Pen and a lot of apps. Finally, I do not feel the quad-core CPU and the 2GB of RAM, I wanted to feel more power, and those are the pros and cons. We give it a 7 out of 10 for the design, a 9 out of 10 for the revolutionary hardware, and an 8 out of 10 for operating system and user interface. The total grade is 8 out of 10 for the Galaxy Note 10.1. Thank you for watching this long review. Hope you liked it. This is tabletnews.com. Bye bye.